eating black eyed peas at the start of the new year is said to bring luck and prosperity. But do you ever wonder what in the world can I make that's delicious and include black eyed peas? Well, guess what? You can make a white chicken chili and it's amazing. Welcome to the Salted Pepper, where we cook for real life, using real food, and we keep it real simple. And today's recipe is simple. You'll need a few ingredients and a pressure cooker. Okay, this is a pressure cooker recipe. Can you make it on the stove? Yes, you can. It's gonna take a lot longer. Trust me, grab your pressure cooker. This is the way to make this chili. Now, you can use frozen or thawed chicken thighs. Either one will work fine. You could even sub in chicken breast. I have one and a half pounds of boneless, skinless chicken thighs. I've tested the recipe with fresh and frozen. Both work fine. Same time period, okay? No worries. Now, the beauty of this recipe is you don't have to saute anything. You can just dump it all in. So I'm gonna go through the ingredients and dump them in as I go. I have one medium size sweet onion. It's about a cup diced. No particular way to dice it. You know, half of an inch is fine. It doesn't even have to be uniform, okay? So don't worry about your chopping skills. Just chop up the onion any which way you want. All right. In this bowl, I have one bulb of garlic that I smashed. It is about eight cloves. My cloves are pretty big. You can use less or more, it doesn't matter. If you smash it, it's going to infuse a really nice flavor into the chili without being bitter or overpowering. If you wanna use minced garlic, use about a tablespoon. Then underneath that, I have one Actually, let's say three quarters of a jalapeno pepper, and it was a pretty big one, okay? It was a larger one. Sliced with the seeds inside, okay? Just sliced up. That's the level of heat that I liked for the chili. If you don't want any kind of spiciness to your chili, omit the jalapeno peppers or remove the seeds for a little bit milder of a spice. You could also just put in a few slices. So you can customize that however you want. The other thing you can do, and I've done it, is I dry my jalapeno peppers when they're growing in the garden. So I dehydrate them and I keep them in a jar. So if you have dried jalapeno peppers, you could throw about four or five slices in there and that'll work fine. You could even use pickled jalapeno peppers. It's gonna give a little different flavor, but you know what? It's your chili, it's gonna be fine. All right, dump that right in. And the reason why I said I had three quarters of a, of a jalapeno pepper is because I make little slices here for a garnish. And there's only two of us here, so I don't need that much. If you wanted to garnish chili and you're serving it, you know, for eight or 10 people, get a second jalapeno pepper. Put the whole one in here and then slice uh, up the other one real thin for garnish on the top. All right, let's get in our chicken. No seasoning, no sauteing, no nothing. Just dump them right in. Now, if they're frozen, hopefully you froze them in a layer, in a single layer. But if not, okay, just don't worry about it. Because when I tried this recipe for the first time, I only had frozen chicken thighs and I had put them all in a bag and they were all in one big block. Don't worry about it. You can do that. It, you just need to break them up a little bit after you pressure cook to make sure that they all cook through. But mine did, okay? So even though they were frozen in a block as they were pressure cooking, they sort of broke up. But I still had to move them around and get them down into the chili. Um, but yeah, it'll be fine. So no worries. Then I have one dried ancho chili pepper that I leave whole because I remove it, all right? But I do take the stem out, so basically just make a little V right here. Pull this up. So I just remove the stem part and I dump out the seeds. The only reason why I dump out the seeds is because we're trying to keep this as a white chicken chili and I feel like the seeds impart a darker color um, and I don't see the benefit in using them. But if you wanted to just throw in the whole thing, you absolutely could. And if a few seeds get in there, don't worry about it, it's fine. 
All right, we just dumped that in. Isn't this easy? Okay, of course we have to have black eyed peas, right? Now, when you get your black eyed peas, they're dried in a bag, you want to sort through them because there can be like little sticks and debris in there. I pulled out about three or four of those um, when I sorted through them. So I just sort through them and then give them a quick rinse. You do not need to soak them. Do not soak them for this recipe. If you soak your black eyed peas and then you pressure cook Per these instructions, you're gonna have super, super mushy peas. Do not soak them, they are completely dry and they can go right in the pot and it's two cups. Now, if you wanted to make a double batch of this soup, I think you could, especially if you have an eight quart pressure cooker, you could just use one pound, okay? So two cups is a little bit more than half of a bag. Um, and, and so if you just wanna make it easier on yourself, just put in a whole bag if you're gonna double the batch. If you just wanna use half of a bag, cause maybe you wanna make a second batch later down the road, um, use half a bag, okay? It might be one and a half cups. It's not gonna matter, guys, all right? This is a perfect time for me to talk about what can you use instead of black-eyed peas. So if you are not a fan of black-eyed peas, I get it. I understand that. I didn't used to be either until I made this Hoppin' John recipe that is, oh my gosh, so, so good. And then I became a fan. But they're a little earthier tasting than other types of beans, so maybe it's not for you. You can use dried navy beans in this recipe and it, the cook time will be the same. If you go up to a kidney bean, you may need to increase your cook time. But guess what? It's not gonna matter if you use boneless, skinless chicken thighs because they are so forgiving. You can overcook them and overcook them and they're still gonna be tender and delicious in your chili. You could also use any type of canned bean, like you could use a, and I would stick with white because it's a white chili, obviously, so I would use a white bean. Any type of white canned bean you want. You probably would want about two 15 ounce cans and drain them and you can put them in before you pressure cook. They do not soften up during the pressure cook time. If you use canned beans, you're still gonna need about 10 to 12 minutes of pressure cook time to get the chicken, uh, if it's thawed, cooked completely. If it's frozen, I would stick with the 18 minutes, okay? And, and your beans are gonna be fine if they're canned. They're gonna be just fine. The other thing you wanna do if you're gonna use canned beans is decrease your liquid. You're not gonna need that to absorb into the beans because they're already cooked and canned. So I would start out with about two cups of liquid, maybe two and a half. You can add more at the end if you need to, but you don't want a real runny chili. So those are my recommendations there. All right, now to the spices, because again, it's simple, simple spices. We have two teaspoons of fine grind sea salt, one teaspoon of ground cumin, one teaspoon of onion powder, one teaspoon of garlic powder, half of a teaspoon of white pepper, and a half of a teaspoon of ground mustard, okay? The ground mustard is kind of an unusual ingredient. It's something that I decided to throw in during the test batch, and guess what? I just love the chili so much that I left it alone. I have not tested the recipe without the ground mustard, but if you don't have any, I think it's fine to skip it. As far as the white pepper goes, that is just because, again, we're making making a white chicken chili. So I wanted to have a white pepper. I have gotten white pepper that is disgusting. So make sure that you know you have a good quality white pepper that you like the flavor of. If not, omit the pepper altogether or use black pepper. It's gonna be fine, okay? Sprinkle this all on the top. And then we put in chicken stock. Four cups of chicken broth or chicken stock. And we just dump that right in. It doesn't get easier than this, does it? And we're gonna close the lid. Now, your chicken broth will determine if you need more salt, but we're gonna worry about that at the end. If you think your chicken broth is on the salty side, decrease the amount of salt you put into one teaspoon and then adjust at the end if needed, okay? All right, we're gonna set up the pressure cooker for pressure cooking with this one. I have to slide the slider over, make sure the valve is in the sealed position. That's very important. We're gonna turn the Ninja Foodi on. We want high pressure, which is what it defaults to. And we're gonna go to 18 minutes and hit start. 
everything's cold in the pot, it's gonna take a little bit of time to come under pressure, probably about 10 to 12 minutes, but I'll let you know um, how long it takes when we're finished. Then we will pressure cook for 18 minutes and we will do a 10 minute natural release and then we'll open it up and we'll be ready to put the final touches because there are a few other ingredients that go into this jelly. And we'll put those in and then we'll be done. When all the pressure is released and it says it's safe to open, we can open up the lid of the pressure cooker. First thing I like to do is go in and grab out that pepper. And then just go in with some tongs and shred up the chicken. You don't have to remove it from the pot. It's gonna shred right up. Look at that, you just, <laughs> you just touch it and it falls apart. This is just so amazing. Now remember, if you used frozen chicken, you might have to break it up a little bit. And if for some reason there are parts that weren't cooked because they were um, you know, frozen solid together, you can just let it simmer in the um, chili for a little bit until it's fully cooked. But these are good. Look at that, look how easy that is. Now the final additions that I found that worked best to balance the flavor out was one and a quarter cups of heavy cream and four ounces of cream cheese. I tried different variations of this, less cream, more cream cheese, and I just wasn't a fan of the flavor. I also tried to omit the cream cheese and use all heavy cream, and it just got a little too heavy, creamy tasting. So use your judgment on you know what flavors you like, but this is what worked for me. One and a quarter cups of the cream. You could also use half and half, just won't be as thick. You could also use milk, but it won't be as thick and four ounces of cream cheese. I don't even worry about if it's room temperature or not. It's, go, it's hot enough in here, it's gonna melt. And then just stir it around. Let that cream cheese melt. And as the chili sits a little bit, it will start to thicken up, but I think it's a pretty good texture right now. It just looks amazing. After about five minutes, the cream cheese should be completely melted. Give it a nice little stir, and then let's taste for seasonings because different types of chicken broth are going to be uh, you know, a little bit different. I also recommend grabbing out a bean or two so you can taste for texture for that to make sure that they are cooked the way that you like them. Now you can't go back under pressure if they're a little undercooked for your liking. You can't go back under pressure, we're too thick now, the chili's too thick, but you can simmer it if you wanted to. Mm. Wow. I think that's perfect. Absolutely perfect. Wow, that jalapeno really comes out, but it's not overly spicy. It just kind of hits you on the back end. It's really super delicious. Now, if you like things even spicier, you taste it and you're like, that's not spicy enough, add in some red pepper flakes. That'll do the trick and it won't change the color of the chili. But you could also use your favorite hot sauce, but that will change the um, color of the chili. You'll end up with pink chili. All right, give a nice scoop here. Oh my gosh, it looks so good. And then just garnish with whatever you like. Little jalapeno slices, a little bit of cheese if you want, and then a little bit of tortilla chips, or like my husband, he likes Fritos. Although I don't know if he would do that with white chicken chili, I'm not really sure. All right, here we go. So the, the black eyed peas are cooked perfectly. Like the texture is soft, but they're not mushy. Mmm, they're perfect. Oh my gosh. The flavors in this chili are amazing. Let me get some chicken out. Oh, I'll skip the jalapeno right now. Let's see. Mmm. My goodness. That is so super tender. I really recommend you use the boneless, skinless chicken thighs in this recipe. The flavors and textures are just simply amazing. I know you are going to love this white chicken chili made with black-eyed peas, and I wish you good luck and prosperity in the new year.